Hi, I'm Barona. I'm an educator with Colorado Parks and Wildlife here today at Roxborough State Park. Not only can you hike, view wildlife, and the night sky, but Roxborough is also a gold standard park for Leave No Trace principles. Leave No Trace is all about educating people on how to preserve our environment. Today, we will be exploring one of Colorado's most important ecosystems, the riparian zone, to better understand the connection between water and our dry state. What does riparian mean? Let's find out. There's something nice about being next to a river or a lake after a hike. But what is it about water that attracts not only us, but our wildlife? Across the state of Colorado, there is a system of water that supports the land and life. Streams, lakes, rivers, reservoirs, and irrigation ditches all make up Colorado's riparian ecosystem. The waterworks that feed nutrients and water into the land. This water system flows from the highest mountains to the lowest plains, saturating the land so that our wildlife can survive in our semi-arid climate. The U.S., on average, gets 32 inches of precipitation, in other words, rain and snow, per year. Although some parts of Colorado receive more, on average, just 16 inches or less of precipitation falls per year across the state, making Colorado on the drier side compared to some other states and every drop counts when it comes to survival. When you look closely at riparian ecosystems, it becomes clear why wildlife can't get enough of these wet places. Not only do they provide a place to drink, they provide the food, shelter, and space that they need to survive. Some even call these places nurseries for all the life that thrives here. Look, come see for yourself. During the spring and summer, these wetlands are bubbling with the songs of birds, including the gobbles of turkeys and the ribbits of frogs and toads. You will find great horned owls with their chicks roosting in cottonwood trees, wood ducks swimming, looking for insects or even a mate, and great blue herons waiting and peering for a fish. Birds and amphibians are not the only animals in these watery worlds. Moose are drawn to the willows that line the banks, getting in one of their favorite foods. But it is the beaver that makes these ecosystems home all year long, building dams and even changing the landscape as they do. However, it's what lies beneath the surface of the water that really makes a splash, the microscopic life. Zooplankton can be found drifting through the water, eating even smaller organisms like algae and phytoplankton. Macroinvertebrates will feed on the zooplankton and they themselves provide food to the birds and amphibians that hang out in these wet places. With all of this food and water available, it is no wonder that wildlife are drawn to these riparian areas. While the world is 71% water, just 3% is freshwater. That's why the quality of every drop counts. To find out more about the importance of these waterworks of Colorado, I've invited Megan, the manager of Riverwatch, to talk with us. So Megan, what exactly is Riverwatch? Thanks for asking. Uh, Riverwatch is a 30-year-old volunteer water quality monitoring program. Um, that's a combination of Colorado Parks and Wildlife and a nonprofit, which is River Science. Together, we work with volunteers to monitor water quality and the health of our watersheds. We use this information to educate the people of Colorado to make decisions to manage water quality in our state. We look at metals like calcium and lead. We look at nutrients like nitrogen and phosphorus. We look at pH, alkalinity, hardness, the amount of oxygen in the water, as well as temperature. And then we also ask our volunteers to collect macroinvertebrates. Oh, macroinvertebrates, just like we talked about earlier, like beetles, shrimp, mayflies, and caddisflies? That's right. Macroinvertebrates tell us how healthy our water is. The more diverse, the better. So what all makes for a healthy river? A healthy river is about balance. That is why we use chemicals or the amount of oxygen in water 
or what's living in it. Each of these has levels that tell us how healthy our environment is. In the United States, the biggest threat to water quality is too many nutrients followed by sediment. This is caused by water runoff as well as fertilizer use. In Colorado, due to the history of mining, metal pollution is the biggest threat to water quality followed by nutrients and sediment. One of the tools we use is this green box in our Riverwatch program. Volunteers use this to measure hardness and alkalinity in water. So why is water quality important? Water quality is essential for all life, from the small macroinvertebrates to the larger wildlife to even us. We rely on safe and healthy water for our food sources, for drinking water, and for the ecosystem. I can see why water quality is essential. I wouldn't want to drink dirty water, so why would wildlife? Exactly. Riparian areas provide critical habitat for wildlife, including fish, and directly benefit water quality because healthy riparian vegetation helps to reduce stream bank erosion, reducing the amount of sediment in a stream. Sediment can cover up macroinvertebrate communities or prevent access to habitat, which can then affect fish. Riparian areas also act as a natural filtration unit between the land and water, helping to filter pollutants such as metals, nutrients, and sediment. And riparian vegetation provides shade, which helps maintain more stable and colder water temperatures. Lower water temperatures help increase oxygen in the water, which is important to maintain fisheries. Wow, water quality really is key to the health of an ecosystem. Megan, thank you so much for joining us today and teaching us all about water quality. As we've seen, water quality is important to us and our wildlife. It even creates a healthy space for plants to grow. You may have noticed that plants in riparian areas look a bit different than out in the grasslands or the mountains. That's because plants have different needs when it comes to water. Some love a ton of water, while others don't need as much. Because water likes to sit in low areas in the landscape, groundwater is typically nearer to the surface and available for plants. The fine soils in these areas hold large amounts of water, just like a sponge. Many of the land surrounding a river or pond can have so much water available that they are flooded, making them wetlands. The riparian zone is also important for filtering and mixing nutrients into the soil and water. This helps provide essential food for plants growing nearby. You can even tell how much groundwater is nearby just by looking at what's growing. Cottonwood trees cover the banks of riparian areas. They love these areas because their seeds only grow in wet, bare soil. They sprout quickly and dig deep roots to get as much of the water and nutrients as possible. Willows build dense chains throughout these areas with their tough roots and water-loving stems, bringing in species like the moose who love this hardy plant. As we've seen, our plants and animals aren't the only ones who benefit from our riparian ecosystems. We benefit too. If you've ever been outside playing sports or been on a long hike, you know the importance of water. It feeds the land and life, including us. Riparian ecosystems also store water for the future, helping us all survive in this dry climate. Proper use of our water keeps us and our environment healthy, and there are many things that we can do to help protect our water every day. When visiting outdoor spaces like this one, Leave No Trace has seven principles that help us to minimize our impact on riparian ecosystems, like properly disposing of trash, at home, try taking shorter showers, turning off the faucet when brushing your teeth, and filling your dishwasher and washing machine with a full load. For more information on River Watch, Leave No Trace, and conserving our water, visit the links in the description. From turning off the faucet when not in use, to properly disposing of trash, there are so many ways to conserve our water and keep it clean. Conservation starts small.